On today's agenda, we have a topic that's both challenging and critical. Understanding the mental health impact of enduring narcissistic abuse. It's an invisible battle many face, often in silence, but here we talk about it openly, offering insights, understanding, and ways to heal. If you're ready to take the first step towards a healthier mental state, this video is made for you. Let's start this important conversation together. Number 1. Feelings of Isolation Alright, let's talk about feeling like you're on an island and not the fun kind with sun and sand, but the kind where you feel totally cut off from everyone else. Imagine being with someone who, bit by bit, starts to pull you away from your friends, your family, and even your hobbies. Before you know it, it's just you and her, and somehow, that circle of people who used to be your go-to for laughs, advice, or just hanging out on a lazy Sunday afternoon, starts to fade away. This isn't about her not liking your friends or being jealous in the usual way. It's more like she has become the main character in your life story, and everyone else just gets written out. You start to feel lonely. Really lonely. But it's tricky because it doesn't happen all at once. It's gradual, and by the time you realize what's happening, you're already isolated. Now, here's the kicker. This loneliness isn't just about missing your friends or family. It digs deeper messing with your head and making you question if maybe you're the problem. That's the isolation talking, and it's a favorite trick in the narcissistic playbook. Your narcissistic wife is good at this game, making you feel alone even in a crowded room because the connections that matter, the ones that nourish your soul, have been chipped away. Number 2. Self-doubt and guilt Moving on to the sneaky beast called self-doubt. You know, that little voice in your head that starts whispering, maybe it's me, not her. It's like having an annoying roommate who's always putting you down, except this one's inside your head, and boy does it love to talk. When you're with someone who's got a knack for making everything seem like your fault, the voice gets louder. She'll twist things around so much that you start to question your own memories and feelings. Suddenly, you're apologizing for things you didn't do and wondering if you're losing your grip on reality. Here's the thing. It's not about you losing your mind. It's about being spun around so much that you can't tell which way is up. It's like being in one of those funhouse mirrors where everything looks distorted. You're not seeing yourself clearly because the reflection you're getting is warped by someone else's need to control and manipulate. But guess what? Recognizing that you're dealing with self-doubt is like finding the exit sign in that funhouse. It's the first step towards finding your way back to reality, where your thoughts, feelings, and memories are valid. It's about reclaiming your voice and trusting yourself again. Turn down the volume on that internal critic and start listening to our own truth again. It's there, under all the noise, waiting to be heard. Number 3. Physical Symptoms Ever notice how stress can sneak up on you, not just messing with your mood, but actually making you feel physically off? It's like carrying a backpack that's getting heavier by the day, only you can't take it off. When you're caught in a web of narcissistic abuse, this is your reality. Headaches, that knot in your stomach, or just feeling tired all the time, it's your body's way of saying, hey, something's not right here. This isn't about catching a bug or needing a good night's sleep. It's deeper. It's how being in a constant state of tension and walking on eggshells around someone can actually take a toll on your health. Think about it. When your mind is always on high alert, your body's in fight or flight mode, churning out stress hormones like there's no tomorrow. Over time, this can lead to all sorts of issues, from trouble sleeping to feeling like you're running on empty. Often you might not even connect these dots right away. It's easy to brush off these symptoms, thinking they're just due to a rough week at work or not eating right. But when you start to notice a pattern, that's your cue. It's your body telling you that the emotional turmoil isn't just staying in your head, it's spilling over, affecting you in ways you might not have expected. The takeaway here is to listen to your body. Those physical symptoms are like warning lights on your car's dashboard, signaling that it's time to take a closer look at what's really going on. If you're enjoying this video, please show it with a like and comment. Your interaction helps us create more content like this. Number 4. Difficulties in making decisions Alright, let's shift gears and talk about decision making, or more like, the struggle bus that decision making turns into when you're tangled up in a relationship that's more about control than connection. Picture this. Every choice, big or small, starts to feel like you're trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Why? Because when your wife is always questioning your judgment or making you second-guess yourself, deciding what to have for breakfast can feel as complicated as planning a space mission. It's wild how being undermined or criticized for every little decision chips away at your confidence. It's like slowly deflating a balloon. You don't notice it getting smaller at first, 
but suddenly it's just gone. This constant doubting doesn't just put you on edge, it burrows into how you see yourself and your ability to make even the simplest call without wondering, am I messing up? But here's a light bulb moment. Realize that this isn't about your ability to choose wisely. It's about being in a spot where your choices are always under a microscope, criticized or dismissed. The real deal is recognizing this pattern and understanding that your decisions aren't the problem. The issue is the environment you're in where making a choice feels like navigating a minefield. Number five, self-destructive behaviors. Sometimes we turn into our own worst enemies. After facing constant criticism and feeling boxed in, you might start doing things that aren't really you. You're not actually trying to harm yourself, it's more like you're trying to deal with the pain in a way that, honestly, doesn't help much in the long run. When you're stuck in a tough spot, especially with someone making your life a roller coaster, it's easy to fall into habits that feel like an escape but aren't doing you any good. It could be reaching for that extra drink more often than you'd like to admit, skipping meals because you just can't find the energy, or maybe you're diving into work and ignoring everything else, even the stuff that makes you happy. These actions might feel like they're helping at the moment, like a quick fix to numb everything out, but they're more like putting a band-aid on a broken leg. What's really happening here is you're trying to cope with feelings that feel too big, too confusing, or just too much. But these quick fixes? They don't work in the long run. Sooner or later, you've got to deal with the source of the problem. Number six, loss of self-identity. Losing your sense of self in a relationship, especially one dominated by narcissistic dynamics, is like fading into the backdrop of your own life. It's as if you're slowly being erased, bit by bit, until you're merely a shadow of your former self. This loss of identity doesn't happen overnight, it's a gradual process where your interests, passions, and even your basic preferences start to align more with your wife's than your own. The movies you watch, the music you listen to, and the places you go can all begin to reflect her choices rather than yours. At first, it might seem like a compromise or even admiration for her tastes, but over time, this blending shifts into a complete overshadowing of your personality. Your voice becomes quieter, your choices become hers, and your life starts to mirror hers so closely that the lines blur. The realization that you've lost touch with your identity can feel like waking from a dream, disoriented and unsure of what is actually yours. Bonus tip, empowerment through recovery. Picture this as your comeback story, where you're the hero at the end, stronger and more in tune with yourself than ever before. Recovery is not just about moving past the tough times, it's about finding your strength in them. It's about realizing that you have the power to rebuild, to choose joy, and to create boundaries that honor your well-being. Start small, celebrate every victory, and remember, healing is not just a journey. It's a path to discovering the most empowered version of you. You've seen how deep the impact of narcissistic abuse can go. Now learn how to heal with ways to reclaim your emotional independence from a narcissistic wife or recognize warning signs she is plotting a smear campaign to prevent further harm. Thanks for watching.